Okay, here we are, uh, 19.3, day number two. Um, we're going to do some stuff with intersecting vectors, find out where they intersect. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the difference between intersection and collision. Uh, but the first thing I'd like to bring to your attention is this. Uh, let's, let's just make up two vectors for a moment. Uh, give me two numbers, uh, both between 1 and 10. Seven and nine. Ooh, two people both said that. Must be an odd day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go negative one and positive three. And our other vector, let's go x, y as well. Uh, just for the fun of it, I'm going to go mu instead of lambda as my variable. Let's go negative two and six. Uh, two other numbers. Three and twelve. Got it. Okay, um, clearly, as I inspect, uh, the starting point for these two vectors is different, clearly, right? Okay, um, now as I look at these vectors, I like to call these vectors the direction vectors. Okay, what do you notice about those? They have the same slope. However, the second one, get this, travels twice as fast as the first. So they're headed in the same direction at different speeds. What would the speed be? Well, the speed of the first one would be the square root of 10. What did I do to find the speed? I found the magnitude. If you find the magnitude of the direction vector, that is the speed of the vector. Okay, likewise here, what should we expect the speed to be? Double, right? So what should we get? Maybe 2 root 10 or square root of what? 40? Oh. Isn't this squared 4 and this squared is 36? Look at that. Okay, so this is technically 2 root 10, and we see that that is double that. Okay, can parallel vectors ever intersect? No, only if they are the exact same vector, right? So that would in inquire us to think, well, then this point has to be the same. So parallel vectors cannot intersect unless they're the exact same vector. Okay, I would like for you and... Uh, someone that you're seated close to, to work on this problem at the top half of the page. And then together we'll rehash uh, that and move on to the second problem. So go ahead, take a few minutes while I take attendance. Uh, for those of you who are, who are looking up here, what's the difference between these two vectors? The direction. It's the starting point. That's the difference between the two vectors. So technically there's two possible answers you could write out for this. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work with this one. The direction vector from A to B is going to be all of the points of B minus all the points of A. Okay, so that's going to be our direction vector. So I'm going to write out X, Y. That's any point I want to be on this line. Okay, where does this start? Well, it starts at A, right? This is our starting point. So I'm going to put a 3, negative 4, 7 plus lambda... Now comes my direction vector. So to get from A to B, my X changes by a positive 4. My Y changes by a positive 9. My Z changes by a negative 5. There's vector, column vector form for the vector that connects those two points. Okay, now let's take that to parametric. Pretty easy representation. We just take out... Uh, all of the matrix language. Oh, that was great. That just disappeared on me. Okay, and then we distribute lambda to that, to that direction vector. So I'd have 3 plus 4 lambda. I'd have negative 4 plus 9 lambda. And 7 minus 5 lambda. There's parametric form. Cartesian form. 
What am I solving for in Cartesian form for each of those parametric equations? Lambda. So for x, I would subtract 3 and divide by 4. For y, I would add 4 and divide by 9. And for z, I would subtract 7 and divide by negative 5. That's as far as you have to go for Cartesian form. That's done right there. Okay, so I'm going to run through the second part. I want you to stop me when you have questions. Okay, if I want to find the angle between vectors, I want to use the two direction vectors. So I'm going to use this direction vector here and this direction vector here. I'll call them A and B. And the formula for finding the angle, which you will not be given on the test, is the following. Not a, it's a pretty easy formula to work with. Okay. I'm going to dot A and B, and then I'm going to find the magnitude of the two of those, and I'm going to take the inverse cosine of that ratio. So let's dot A and B. A dot B. That's going to be 3, 4, 5 dotted with uh, negative 1, 2, and 1. What would A dot B come out to be? Well, negative 3 plus what? plus 8, right, 4 times 2, plus 5. So it looks to me like I get a positive 10. All right, so A dot B is 10. Well, magnitude of A, let's look at the magnitude of A. Magnitude of A is the square root of 9 plus 16 plus 25. I got 9 by square root 3, 16 by square root 4, 25 by square root 5. So I get square root of 50. That's the magnitude of A. All right, so square root of 50. And then the magnitude of B is going to be the square root of 6. 1 squared, 2 squared, and 1 squared. All right. Okay, just by looking at this, 10 over the square root of 300. Okay, cosine of theta equals 10 over the square root of 300. Is that angle going to be acute or obtuse? It's going to be acute, right? Why? Because the cosine is positive. If the cosine is positive, as you might remember from your favorite friend, the unit circle, cosine is positive over here. It's negative over here. All right, therefore, I'm expecting some acute angle here when I do the following. Would somebody please uh, give me a value there? Okay, so evaluating the inverse cosine of 10 over a 30 gives you that. Okay, here are your three forms again. I'm not going to go over these right now, but this should become you know something that becomes more familiar to you every single day. Uh, here is where I want to go with things on this page. All right, I'm just going to cover A, B, and C at the top half. I'm not going to talk about the stuff below. I've kind of already touched on it. So I want to first, A, put this into uh, vector equation form. Okay, right now it's in parametric equation. I'm going to put it in vector form. This is a chicken that costs no money. This is about as free as it gets. It's free chicken. Now, instead of using lambda or mu, this time I'm using t. No big deal. Sometimes that's used. t is typically used to represent time of some sort. Okay. Now, because these are linear in nature, the speed is constant. Right? There's no change in the speed, right? Because the slope of the vector is always linear. Therefore, when I calculate the speed of the vector, the speed is going to equal the magnitude of the direction vector. Let's just call it v for a moment. My direction vector v is this vector right here. Now you might be like, well, how did you come up with that? I'll show you in a moment. So let's do the magnitude of this. That would be 5 squared plus 
negative 2 squared, which I think comes out to be square root of 29, let's say, meters per second. Okay, so a little over 5 meters per second. So how do you come up with this idea of speed? Well, if I start at a point and my vector travels 5 units to the right and 2 units down, okay, let's say that here you're at time t equals 0, and here you're at time t equals 1. Well, isn't speed equal to distance traveled over time? Distance traveled in this case is the magnitude of this vector, and time is one unit. So there's your speed, right? Speed will always be positive. Velocity may not be, but that's a calculus question, so we're not going to do that yet. So Eddie's biking station wagon runs out of gas, and he's pushing it at this vector, right? So let's say 5 meters east for every 2 meters south, yeah? At an angle. He's not in the city, so it's not like gridlock. It's you know, lake, lakeside people, yeah. Okay, so he's pushing it. Will he run into... Another car at this point, 19, negative 1. I don't know. Would 19, negative 1 be on his path? How do we know? It's going to the right and down, right? So potentially, he, where did he start? He started here. Where is he going? He's going this direction. Could he end up? at 19, negative 1. Could he end up there? Let's see. Potentially, right? So could I say that 19 equals 4 plus 5t? At what time would he be at 19 for our x value? How about t equals 3, right? And then negative 1 is equal to 5 minus 2t. Holy cow. It'd be at both of those locations at the same time. Would his station wagon collide with um, Nate's Minnesota Twins Prius? Would it collide? Yes. What if these two were different? Would it collide? No. Because it might be at 19. It's, it's going to hit 19 for X. It will. And it's going to hit negative 1 for Y. It will. But it just might not at the same time. So then collision wouldn't happen. Okay. Oh, yes. Such a good project. Okay, so let's, uh, let's do a visual representation of the intersection of these lines. And then I'm going to do it algebraically. And then you're going to do your homework. Okay, so I'm going to represent R1 in column vector form. That's x, y. This is, for whatever reason, kind of confusing for folks, but that's just where it starts. And this is where it goes. Yeah? How's that feel? That's just awesome. Love it. If you got your phone out, put it away, especially if you're going to ask me for help later. Okay? Where does this one start? Ooh, it starts down there. Five negative two. Scary. Mu? Direction, right one, down two. Let's see where these two intersect. It might be kind of counterintuitive for a moment. Okay, so it starts at two, three, goes right two, up one. Two, three, right two, up one. That is line one. Okay, so, so if... If it starts at 2, 3, that means lambda equals 0 there at this point. What does lambda equal here? 1. Good. Okay. Now the other vector starts at 5, negative 2, and goes right 1 and down 2. So 5, negative 2, goes right 1 and down 2. But can those even intersect? So that's mu equals 0. This is mu equals 
one. Oh, wait a minute. They can intersect. What do I have to do to mu? I got to make it negative. Watch me make these intersect. Just watch me. All right, so if I'm a math student, I hope. If I'm a math student, I would think, oh, this is mu equals 1. This is mu equals 0. This would be mu equals what? Negative 1. Mu equals? And mu equals? Negative 4. Good job. You almost got me. So I'm expecting mu to be between what two values? Negative 3 and negative 2. Where am I expecting lambda to be? Not equal. What the heck? Here, let me just change that. Between 0 and 1. All right, so let's solve this algebraically because at this point, I could say, I think I know what that point of intersection is, but eh, it'd be guessing. So here is what I do, and here's what you should do. Take this, and let's put it in parametric form. Scary, I'm skipping a step. I'm not going to put it in vector form first. No, you're going to be OK. x would equal 2 plus how many lambdas? 2 lambdas. What would y equal? 3 plus 1 lambda. OK. How about for the second one? x would equal 5 plus mu, and y would equal negative 2 minus 2, oh, I almost put a lambda there, negative 2 minus 2 mu. All right, so at that point of intersection, what's true about our x values? They're equal. Yeah, so for our x values, what's true? Well, that means that our x's have to be equal. That means 2 plus 2 lambda has to be equal 5 plus mu. So at this point, I'm not going to start the process yet. I want to write out my y's as well. But I want my y's and my x's to be equal. So I've got 3 plus lambda, and I've got negative 2 minus 2 mu. Uh, this is just a system of equations. That's all it is. Now, I know that they intersect. So do I have to solve for both lambda and mu? I just have to find one of them and plug it back into the appropriate equation. So let's solve for the easiest looking variable we got up here. What do you think? Lambda in the x's or the y's? Let's go with lambda in the y's. So what would lambda equal? OK, so I get lambda equals negative 5 minus 2 mu. I'm going to plug that back in over here for lambda. That means I'll have 2 plus 2 times lambda equals 5 plus mu. Uh, I plug in negative 5, so I'm going to do that substitution right here, minus 2 mu. And I'm going to solve for mu. Let's do it. Uh, distributive property would tell me that's negative 10 minus 4 mu is equal to 5 plus mu. So 5 mu equals negative 13. Oh, hold on. Yep. So mu equals negative 13 fifths. Ooh, is negative 13 fifths between negative 2 and negative 3, like we said on the last page? Yes, it is. Uh, just because I want to show how awesome this is, I'm going to plug that back in to show that lambda does end up, the value for lambda does end up between 0 and 1. I want to do it just because it's fun. 
Okay, so here's mu. Mu is negative 13 fifths. So lambda is going to equal, I know, you're like, wow, you're a really good mathematician. I know, you're welcome. What? Multiply, multiply, oh, look at that. Yep, look at that, one-fifth. So lambda equals one-fifth, and mu equals negative 13 fifths. So how would I find the point of intersection? That's the that's what I'm doing here. How would I find the point of intersection? I said lambda was one fifth. I said mu is negative thirteen fifths. I could find the point of intersection by then plugging in one fifth for lambda or negative thirteen fifths for mu. Should we finish it out and call it good? Yeah. We want to find that point where they cross. Okay, so let's do it. That's 2, 3, 1, 5th, 2, 1. Okay, so we had 2, 3. Lambda. 2, 1. Was it 2, 1? There's 2, 1. Good. And I'm substituting one-fifth in for lambda. So that means I distribute one-fifth to two and one-fifth to one. So the point of intersection would equal two plus two-fifths. But all two is the same as ten-fifths, so that'd be twelve-fifths. And three is the same as fifteen-fifths, so fifteen-fifths plus one-fifth is 16 fifths. This would be the point where, I don't know, whatever these two objects are, two kids running sprints in the backyard between math problems, maybe where they, you know, collide, where they run into each other, where their paths would intersect. Now, they wouldn't collide. How do I know that they wouldn't collide? How do I know this is just an intersection of their paths and not a collision? Because... Well, not necessarily the starting point, but what's true about their lambda and mu? They're not the same. And I, plus, you can't go back in time, right? You know, I'm not going to be able to make mu my son unless he's sprinting backwards, which would be impressive. Whatever. But those two values would have to match. They'd have to be the exact same in order for there to be collision. This is just an intersection of their paths. Okay, I want to do one more thing, and then we're going to call it good. Uh, I want to show you the shortcut to writing this um, in, uh, what do I want to call it, uh, vector, column vector form. I lost it for a second there. This is in the notes, I believe. Or is this homework? I don't know. Let me look. No, this is notes. Okay, I can very quickly and swiftly do this. And I want to show you on the first one, and then I'm going to teach you on the second one. Okay, I can look at this, and I can say to myself, this goes through this point at this slope. You're like, what? How'd you do that? Just wait a second, and I'll teach you. You ready? All right, let's do the second one. How did I get, well, what is this? This is lambda, right? If I want lambda to equal zero, that's going to give me my first point. So if this equals zero, what would the numerator, what would x have to be in the numerator in order for that to be zero? x has to be one half. Right? What would y have to be? Negative 5. 1 half and negative 5. Okay, so over here, what would make the numerator 0 in this one? 2. 2 minus 2 gives me 0. What would this have to be? y would have to equal negative 3. There's your first point. Okay, now slope. This one's kind of cool. How do I find my direction vector? Why don't you just wait right there and I'll show you. 
Yong. You take the denominator's number, if there isn't one, consider it a 1, over the coefficient of x or y in the numerator. So this would be 3 halves right here. This would be what? 3. What would this be? Negative 4. What would this one be? Yep, 2. And that's how you shortcut yourself from... Uh, Cartesian form to vector, column vector form. All right, cool. I think that's good for today. That's a lot of minutes. Like, subscribe, comment, do sprints in the backyard between math problems. Think about identities all the time. 106 more days.